So last week we explored how as our observations accumulate in a time series, we can start to detect dynamics that are occurring at different time scales. This week we're going to explore a different issue with time series, which is the tendency for time points in close proximity to have an influence on each other or a relationship with each other, which is probably the better way to phrase that. And this relationship is often referred to as autocorrelation. So what we'll do next is explore this concept of autocorrelation, why it occurs in ecological time series, and a variety of tools for us to explore its existence in our particular time series and how to think about it and what it may mean for us. All right, we're gonna start by thinking about what a time series might be like if we were just randomly drawing numbers um, from a distribution. So what I have shown here on the screen is a graph of frequency distribution of values imagine whatever values you want. And it's centered on zero with a standard deviation of one. We're gonna take this distribution and randomly draw values from it. And each time we draw a value, we'll pretend that's an observation at a time step on our time series. I'm gonna quickly shrink down our frequency distribution here so that we can have both it and a time series together. Good. That should be visible. Time and value. And we're going to center this on zero here. If you look at this distribution and we randomly draw a number from it, the odds are our first value is going to be somewhere close to zero, right? So our first time step, I'll just peg it right at zero just for fun. I'm going to pull another value out of there. And let's say it's, a, it's close to zero, but slightly positive. Pull another one out there, slightly below zero, but really close to it. I pull another one out here. And you know, there's some chance, just by happenstance, that you're gonna get something that's far from zero, because there is some probability of this. And I'm starting to pull enough draws from this distribution that I get a little bit further away from zero. But my next draw is probably gonna take me back pretty close to zero, so I'll Put it here, and then maybe another one down here, another one up here. Eventually, I'm going to get one of these extreme values, but I'll always come back to being around zero. Put the reference line in here. And so I've drawn all these values randomly from this distribution and generated this time series. And every time we pull a, a value from the distribution, it doesn't matter what value we pulled before. There is complete independence between one observation and the next. And this generates a type of signal in, in, that you can see in, in time series, which is often referred to as white noise. The complete independence and in random draws from a distribution. So what we're gonna do now is jump over to R and I'm going to show you how we can generate our own white noise time series and do that with the number of observations that will help us more directly compare what a white noise distribution looks like um, and think about how it differs from what we expect biologically um, from an ecological system.